a great question here from someone who has a deep faith, has a particular spiritual worldview and path that's really important to them. And they wonder how much and how soon should they talk about that in their business and their work? Well, I really welcome your comments below um, from two perspectives. One is if you're in that situation too, and if you have a, a particular faith, spiritual practice um, that's really important to you, and you're you're kind of itching to talk about it in your work, in your content, in your offerings, maybe even weave it into your offerings in some way, but you're hesitant or, okay, some of you may have already done so. How is it going? Honestly, I, 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 I'm hoping to crowdsource uh, the responses to this. So really, please do comment below um, your, your thoughts on this. Have you woven your spiritual thoughts, your spiritual worldview into your work? How is it going? Uh, was it, did you hesitate in the beginning to do that? Um, and did, once you did it, how's it going? How did it go? Did you, do you wish you did it earlier? Do you wish you didn't do it so early in your, in your audience building in your offerings? How did it go? Please go ahead and comment below. I, I really look forward to seeing that. And on the other hand, from the other perspective, from the audience perspective, from the perspective of a student or a customer or client of somebody else, a mentee, have you seen your mentor or coach or um, you know the program facilitator talk about their faith, talk about their spiritual worldview and their beliefs? And were you glad that they did? Did it make you feel even more connected to their work and more interested in their work? Did it turn you off? How was it? Now, don't mention names. Unless you're praising someone, if you're criticizing someone, obviously don't mention names, but, but your criticisms are welcome, including of me when I've talked about my spiritual worldview. Um, it, you can criticize me with by name, obviously. I really welcome that uh, below, below this video. But did they talk about it too much? How did they weave it into their work that you wish they didn't? Really, really welcome your comments below. And please pause the recording first and respond below with your comments before I share my thoughts on this. All right, so first let me talk about my own experience and then I'll address this person's particular faith, okay? And so my experience has been that I, I have hinted at my spiritual worldview in various videos and courses even. So both my free content and my paid content include some of my spiritual worldview um, and I always preface it, and please let me know what you think about it, but I always preface by saying, all right, I'm going to get a little woo with you or something like that. And I'm like, all right, please indulge, indulge me as I, as I talk about my spiritual ideas. But, you know, you can, you can borrow these ideas and situate them within your own worldview and, and tell me what you think kind of thing. So I, I probably apologize for it too much. Maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe you appreciate that I apologize for it or ask you to situate it within your own worldview comment below. Um, but I do wish I brought it in sooner in my business because, and um, I, because I, of course, I enjoy talking about it. I mean, <laughs> that's probably the main thing. And secondly, I have both lost people and also gained people by doing this. I have had some people even tell me, I mean, even something as simple, like, for example, I said, I always talk about content as ministry, meaning when you, when you create content, your free content, particularly, and when you, when you can, when you could see it as your ministry, as like, I'm just, I'm serving humanity and I'm serving the growth of my own soul as well, I'm ministering to my soul, but I'm also serving, hopefully some, someone in, out there is being served by this ministry, no matter if they buy from me. Right, that kind of detail. I mean, anyway, I talk about this, and 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 someone has told me, George, I get really turned off when you say ministry because it reminds me of religion. And I'm like, okay, that's okay. I mean, I still can't find. I mean, I can say content as a cause, but it still doesn't have the same energy. And then I've also had someone say, George, because you said content and ministry, I immediately resonate with that, and I, that's really set me on fire for my own. I'm like, so like I've I've. Like I've lost people and I've gained people, meaning lost someone and I've gained a kindred spirit by 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 saying this kind of thing and by talking about my spiritual worldview um, over the years. 
And so I think that if you are going to talk about it, you have to be willing to both lose people and also to be aware that at some point you're going to gain people, gain gain kindred spirits and customers and clients too by this, right? At least followers and people who are like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that was your thing. And I'm I, me too, or I really respect that, you know? Um, so, and, and this, so yeah. And, and I've also at the same time talked about certain part of my spiritual past that has probably unnecessarily turned people off because I haven't been clear enough that you know what, this is a very specific type of worldview and I really welcome you to, so in other words, for me, I've learned to, I don't want to say, say what's popular because that sounds like I'm a sellout and maybe I am, I don't know, maybe I am a sellout, but I've learned to gauge how to talk about my faith in a way that parts of it are beneficial and appropriate, maybe I should say to my to the people I love working with. And then this is part of but this is part of the the answer, I think, is over time you'll get to sense into as you as you develop programs and a clientele, a client base, you'll sense into what kinds of people you love working with. Right. I really like heart like bosom buddies. Like you really, oh I'm, I I love working with these kinds of clients and these kinds of students and these kinds of customers. And what kinds of people are like, you know, if I mention this just even anything about my spirituality that turns them off. Well, guess what? Maybe they should go to someone else who doesn't have this kind of passion as you do for, as I do for spirituality. Plenty of people, please welcome. Please, you know, don't just, you know, I am like, my niche mates are worth supporting too. Maybe they won't want to talk about their spirituality and that's great. Then you're a better fit for them, right? I think for me, authenticity being such a high value that I don't want to keep that that's such an important part of my life and, and work to, to to like be you know prevented from talking about it is not it doesn't bring my energy signature uh, alive as much so i have to talk about it for me but i've learned to talk about it in the and talk about certain things in the ways that also match my kindred spirit clients and students that's what i'll say right okay now so this person's particular faith, this person is um, has come back, you know, after exploring different different religions and faiths, they've come back to their Catholic faith. And he, you know, this person's saying, hey, should I, should I, should I start up a, a separate YouTube channel and where I talk about my Catholic faith and don't sell anything there? And then this part, I, I just hint at spiritual things, but don't name my particular faith. And well, I, anyway, I, I hope whatever I've already said is helpful, um, you know, and also look at the comments below and, and see if those are helpful for your decision. But my feeling about it is this, like this person is saying, well, you know, if I don't talk about my Catholic faith, it's probably better financially. Like it'll, it'll probably help me sell my offerings better. Um, and I need to support my family. So maybe I need to prioritize not turning people off when I say my Catholic faith and da da da. Um, and and so here's what, when I want to when I saw that I'm like wait a wait a wait a wait a wait. How do you know that it's going to be less profitable to talk about your Catholic faith these days? It might be more profitable actually to go all in on weaving your Catholic faith into your work. Why? Because actually, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's been a resurgence of Christianity on the internet. I mean, I haven't followed it a lot, but I've noticed certain people, for example, Jordan Peterson, like, I don't know, some of you hate him. Right? Some of you can't stand him, but some of you love him. I don't know uh, where, where you stand on that. But he is super, he's gotten super popular and he's not minded talking about faith. Now he always is like, I'm not sure, nobody knows what his faith is, but he he doesn't mind like doing biblical teachings. Like he has certain segments on, I'm like, wow, really? Um, <clears throat> and like another one, which some of you will, will, will be turned off by this, but Doreen Virtue, right? Like was, was one of the most popular new age authors out there, sold tarot, tarot decks. And then 
she in a couple years ago, she became a born again Christian and like just went all in on that and like talking against new age and all that. And, and but these are just two examples. There are so many examples I'm seeing popping up like, wow, there's some somehow a resurgence like <clears throat> I'd say maybe 10 years. I would say probably from the 70s, 70s to the 2010s there was resurgence in Eastern spirituality. Eastern faith was very popular. You know, Buddhism, you know, Zen, Vedanta, Vipassana, you know, non-dual. Those were, were pretty popular for a couple of decades. But I feel like starting in the mid-2010s and into the 2020s, there was, there's, culture always has cycles. There's always cycles. There's something that's unpopular becomes popular and then people get tired of it. And then something else that was unpopular becomes popular to replace it. Same thing with Christianity. Well, I think Pope Francis had something to do with it, right? Like Pope, well, talking about Catholic faith, Pope Francis was like a more popular Pope than the previous one um, because he was he's good about talking about social issues, environmental issues and things like that. A lot of people appreciate it, even if they're not Catholic, right? I think for that, that was one factor. But another factor, like I said, people get tired of Eastern faith now. People get tired of new age. The culture just keeps changing. That's it. And Jesus is now more popular than back in the, even the seventies or eighties, right? Like, but like I said, the culture. So ironically, it might be more profitable for you to just go all in on Catholic. And like I said, that's not my faith, but I think if you went all in on it, it could be really popular. Actually, it could not, it, you'll turn off a bunch of people for sure. Of course, a lot of Catholic trauma out there, for sure. But you might turn on a bunch, like a secret segment of your audience who are like, oh my gosh, how come we never, right? And also, here's the thing. Whatever faith you are, let's use Catholic in this sense. There are influence, fellow influencers in that faith that you can partner with, that you couldn't if you weren't out about it, right? I don't care. Let's say you're, let's say you're Hindu, all right? You can partner with Hindu influencers. Let's say you are really into angels. You can part like with, without being out about it, you couldn't partner with angel influencers. Same thing with Catholic. There are so many. Can you imagine? Not only can you in, partner with Instagram influencers who are, are out about their Catholic faith, you can you can partner with the Catholic Church, <laughs> like in various ways, talking about a major influencer. Like they might. I don't know. I don't. I don't know the Catholic Church and then in and out. But I. I don't know. They. They probably are happy to have an influencer who is willing to be another influencer who's willing to be out about it because most most people intuitively. I get it. Most people intuitively say I have to hide my Catholic faith. I have to hide my, you know, Hindu faith. I have to hide the fact that I'm super into crystals or angel or whatever. It's intuitive to hide because you've gotten some flack or some pushback from your family members, from your neighbors, from you know uh, your friends, from your your your, your cousins, your, whatever. They're saying, yeah, don't don't talk about that stuff, you know, at the family table, right? It's impolite to talk about religion. Well, on the internet, it's the opposite. It, it's not that it's it's impolite, sure, but it makes fires a bunch of people up. And also, by the way, last thing I'll say. It's good for the search engines. If you're going to be like, I'm spiritual, you're going to be washed out with everyone, billions of other people who are spiritual providers. No one's going to find you. But if you say, I'm a Catholic, whatever, I'm going to say career coach, or I'm a Catholic health coach, or I'm a Catholic, you know, uh, technology solver, you're going to be like super unique and people are going to find you. Okay. Particularly with a giant faith like that. Like if you were like, I don't know, like you were really into some tiny, tiny faith, like Baha'i. Baha'i is even pretty big, pretty big. Like, right? uh, Who is that? Uh, Rain Wilson, right? That, that's another example, right? I don't know when he did, but I know at least for the last five years, famous actor, so Hollywood celebrity came out as Baha'i and like was and has been partnering with the Baha'i faith to get word about word out to talk about why he's Baha'i. And you see what I mean? Like. Yeah. Or another example, again, some people will hate, hate me for this or some, love me. for I don't know. But an, a politician, Vivek Ramaswamy, famous YouTuber. Now he's like, he's been the most 
I watch YouTube a lot, so I notice people like this. He's been the most successful YouTuber of all the politicians in this cycle. He is very out about his Hindu faith among a bunch of Christians, like hardcore evangelical Christians. He's saying, I'm going to tell the truth. I'm Hindu. You know, <laughs> I'm like, wow, like that's not quite popular online yet, especially among Americans. But but you see what I mean? So I think there are different models you can look at to say, well, how are they doing it? And you should you should you should notice those models and then see how you want to situate yourself within that within that uh, within that spectrum of how out you want to be about it. But but back to the original questions, how much should you weave it into your work? Well, I know for me, I enjoy weaving it into my work. And I do, if you see my YouTube channel, notice this, the same channel, I alternate videos between, here's my talk about business and you know audience building. And then I, I, like every two or three, sometimes four videos, I have a video that's completely just about spiritual growth or habit change, personal growth. Anyway, but my version of spirituality, I'll like, just make a video just about that. And I'll weave it into the same YouTube channel. And I was doing it as a test in the beginning to see what, what would happen, right? Because you're supposed to have a separate channel for every niche that you're tackling. I get it. I get it. Better for SEO, probably, honestly. And probably better for like general YouTube audience building. But I'm like, you know what? I'm so tired. I don't want to do another YouTube channel. I have to manage that. And yeah, it's probably not that much work, but whatever. I just want to do the same channel. And I'm just curious, how much can I weave in my spirituality into my work and see if my audience will still stick with me? And guess what? They have, they did. And actually I'm looking at the stats and when I publish my spiritual videos I just, on YouTube, I uncheck the box that says publish to subscriber notification, subscriber feed and notify them. Like, you know, when you upload a YouTube video, you have a checkbox in the advanced settings that you can say, oh, do you want to, do I want to notify my subscribers or not? I uncheck the ones that are just about my spirituality so that they don't notify subscribers. But my hardcore subscribers, my hardcore fans will still see that YouTube, that video in the YouTube suggestions. And they'll say, oh, George on spirituality. Let me go and check it out. And it also has a different type of thumbnail. My, my business thumbnails are a particular type. And then my spiritual thumbnails are a particular type too. So it's almost like, it's almost like I'm starting a second channel within my single YouTube channel, like a second theme basically. And I'm looking at the stats. I'm like, you know what? I think they're, they're into it actually. <laughs> and I think I can start to weave it in more even to my business stuff. So I hope this is helpful and thank you again for asking. I look forward to seeing your comments below.